Hi everyone, welcome back to another week of ABA with Vic. Now before we begin with this week's topic, go ahead and click the subscribe button so that you can get notified about the upcoming videos of ABA with Vic. This week's topic is ABC data. Now last week we identified the four functions of behavior using the acronym OSEAT. The S standing for sensory or automatic. The E standing for escape. The A stands for attention. And finally, T stands for access to tangibles or different items. Now, when taking ABC data, it is important to collect as much information as possible. The reason why we call ABC data ABC data is because we look at the antecedent, the behavior, and consequence as a whole. When taking data, we take in consideration what happened before the behavior, the behavior itself, and then also what happened after the behavior. Now when collecting ABC data, after you gather all your information, you can implement a behavior teaching plan. By doing so, you can modify behaviors. Or also, you can begin to reinforce appropriate behaviors. Now once again, with ABC data, we take a look at what happened before the behavior. So when taking ABC data, what you want to do is collect as much information as possible. For example, what happened before? Was the student or individual sitting down quietly? Was he or she asking for certain things? We want to know what happened before the behavior. What led up to the behaviors that we're observing? Now, once again, when collecting data, be as detailed as possible. If the student is crying, note how long the student is crying. What is the student doing? And if he or she is screaming, know how intense the screaming is. If the student is protesting, Know in which the manner the student is protesting. Is he saying no? Is he requesting for a break? Is he crying? And finally, you want to look at the consequence. What happened after the behavior? So pretty much an ABC data form looks like this. So here we have the actual ABC data. As you can see, we start off with the antecedent, following by the behavior, and then finally the consequence. And then as you can see in this form, it outlines what happened before. So it says here, where were you and the client? What was he doing before the behavior? What were you saying before the behavior? And for the behavior, what did he do? What did he say? And finally, for the consequence, what did you do? How did you respond to the behavior? What did you say? By taking ABC data, you are able to find out what is the function of the behavior. Let's see the following example. The antecedent for this example is that the child was in the living room watching TV. The behavior was that the child began jumping while sitting on the chair. The child also began waving his hands from left to right for two minutes. And then for the consequence, the parent responded by giving the child a ball so he could sit on. When the child sat on the ball, the child stopped jumping and stopped waving his hands. With this information, we can determine that the function of the behavior is sensory or automatic. Now let's take another example. Based on the ABC data, let's find out the function of behavior for this example. The antecedent was that the teacher said, okay, time to do math problems, and gave math sheet to the student. The behavior was that the student began crying and screaming for three minutes. The consequence, the teacher took away the math sheet, and then the student stopped crying. Now for this example, the function of behavior would be escape, because the student was crying when providing a demand to do the math problem. Then the student stopped crying after the teacher took away the math sheet. Here's another example. The antecedent is, brother was talking with a friend over the phone. The behavior, the child began yelling the brother's name five times and began kicking the door with left foot eight times. The consequence was that the brother put away the phone and stated, stop it. The child stopped and left. This would be an example of attention-seeking behavior, and the function is attention. Here's another example. The antecedent is, child saw a cookie jar and kitchen table. The behavior was, the child tapped mom's shoulder and asked, can I get two cookies? And then the parent responded with, 
giving the child two cookies. Now by taking a look at this data, it seems that the behavior is appropriate. And you could also take data on appropriate behavior, not just maladaptive behavior. And then the function for this behavior is access to tangibles. When collecting data, one of the important things is to observe the behavior, but then also know how you responded to the behavior. When taking data, make sure that your data is very consistent. If you're planning to take ABC data, make sure you have a plan on when to take ABC data. Take data for a few days, have a plan of what type of behaviors you are going to observe. Once you take your ABC data, come up with a solution on how to address certain behaviors. If you have any maladaptive behaviors or inappropriate behaviors, you might want to come up with a plan that you can modify behaviors. Remember when taking ABC data to be as detailed as possible, but also consider that you need to know observable behaviors. For example, if a student is crying, you want to know how long the student is crying. Or if the student is kicking, you want to know how long the student is kicking. One of the things you want to avoid is to write emotion on ABC data. You don't want to write the student feels sad because that is not an observable uh, characteristic. Take data on measurable behavior. If the student or individual is hitting, know how long the student is hitting. If you want to know that the student is sad, you might want to stay away from feelings because feelings are not behaviors that are measurable. For example, if you say that a student feels sad, there's no way that we as other professionals will be able to say, oh yeah, this is a measurable behavior. If you're taking data on a student who is distracted, know how the student is looking. Is the student looking to other places? Is the student talking constantly? Describe how the student is being distracted. So for this week, we went over ABC data. We learned how ABC data is broken into three categories, the antecedent, the behavior, and then the consequence. By taking ABC data, we learn how do we as professionals respond to other individuals' behavior. By collecting ABC data, we can create interventions so that we can promote appropriate behavior but as well reinforce appropriate behavior that the student is exhibiting. Once again, if you have any questions or if you have any topic in mind that you want me to cover, please leave me a comment down below. And you can email me at abawithvic at gmail.com. And also you can tweet me at abawithvic on Twitter. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. So that will be all for this week. And as always, thank you for watching.